complete coverage continues. George Solis is live in Ellicott City with more on this flash flooding. George. Good evening, Marcus. Right now, some of the water has started to recede, but hours ago here on Main Street, water flooded the streets. Some of the damage very significant, significant and across the region, it was just as bad. The damage intense. The aftermath of flash flooding all over the region tonight in Maryland. Courtney Wetland sharing this dramatic video of water so high in Ellicott City, one man had to be carried to safety. Insane, and it was a flash flood, and I literally came here. I thought we were going to have dinner within five minutes. It was panic, and my friend was pulling someone out of there, and I've never seen anything like it. And this man telling WJZ the water got so high, cars were swept away. It started coming through pretty heavy. The water got up right about where we were standing here. Um, it would have been about waist high on me right here. To give you an idea of how intense these flood waters were. Take a look behind me. You can see that some of these cars actually washed onto others. And if that isn't bad enough, take a look down here. You can see a car actually into this channel. And even worse still, this car completely totaled. And take a look at this road flooded in Carroll County on Balls Church Road. One viewer captured this video under 83 at the backside of Metal Mill Club facing Jones Falls. This road also flooded on North Forest Park Drive. Tonight, some are counting their blessings. And all I can say is like, you know what, I'm just happy I'm alive because And tonight, a number of people still on the street trying to get to their cars, making sure that all of their belongings are still intact. A number of first responders also still on scene here, and it's just unclear at this hour just how widespread the damage is. Thank you, George. And right now we're joined by meteorologist Chelsea Ingram. Definitely something a lot of people are dealing with that. That rain came and created all of this flood. And it came down so fast, and uh, radar estimates estimates at, that at least like four inches, maybe even more, oh. fell in portions of Howard County. You can just imagine how that made some of those rivers and smaller streams and creeks just flood very, very fast and really swell. Let's begin with Mike Helgren live on Main Street with the very latest on the damage and the recovery. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Jessica. It's a dusty, muddy mess here, and taxpayers have spent a lot of money in the past on flood control efforts. Some blame recent development and other factors in the area, but the county executive tells us there's little that could have been done to prevent a once-in-a-lifetime flooding event. There's people in the water! The deadly flooding that ravaged Ellicott City doesn't just happen once in a generation. The National Weather Service says it's a thousand-year event. Sky Eye Chopper 13 shows the aftermath from the deluge of rain, a month's worth in less than two hours. You know it's coming, but you just, you just don't know when. John Shoemaker lives on Main Street, and his family has a business here. I don't know if everybody will come back, but hopefully people make the decision to come back when it's right for them. But when you get six inches of rain in two hours, there's nothing you're going to build is going to be able to contain that. Just to show you what a huge job this is, crews brought in more than 70 truckloads of stone, and they used it to shore up the foundation of this historic church. The repair costs will be in the tens of millions of dollars, and recovery is likely to take months. Dozens of buildings are structurally unsound, Maryland's congressional delegation promises federal funding. What can we do in terms of infrastructure improvements to make this a more disaster resilient community? Ellicott City's historic Main Street is like a fishbowl surrounded by high hills. It sits in a deep valley, susceptible to floodwaters fed by the Patapsco River and its tributaries. This area has been neglected. The, the previous county councils have not done enough for flood control. Major floods have been happening here since the 1860s. Those who lived through Hurricane Agnes in 1972 say this is worse than the destruction then. I really hope that we can get this that whole thing put back together, hopefully sooner rather than later. More than 100 damaged cars have been removed from the area. Officials are urging patience. It really will be months, perhaps years, to get things back to normal. Jessica. Our complete coverage continues now live from Sky Eye Chopper 13 with Captain Jeff Long and a scene from his vantage point of, of all the cleanup and the recovery efforts underway now. Now, starting on the west side of Ellicott City, near Ellicott Mills Drive and working our way to the east. You can see all of the mud that's crossing the road here. This is Main Street. Sidewalks on each side of the 
road here have been compromised and storefronts completely destroyed on both sides of the road as we go down the middle of Main Street in the heart of Ellicott City. I have never seen anything like that. And you can imagine for many of these businesses and the people who were here on Saturday night, they came, they came to have dinner, they walked in an hour and a half later, there is a rushing river taking their cars away. Amy Yensi joins us now with the very latest on the damage that these businesses saw and how they are cleaning up today. And Amy, you went inside and I can imagine that was very difficult to see. It's very difficult indeed, Jessica, when you consider the absolute charm that Ellicott City is known for. That charm tonight is swept away by these floodwaters. Everywhere you look, there are signs of damage. Some of those businesses are gone, possibly for good, but the storm damage is having another impact. It's bringing an already tight-knit community even closer. Well, this is truly a once-in-a-millennium type of event. What that means is there's about a 0.1% chance that an event like this will occur in any given year. Take a look at the storm total rainfall that occurred on Saturday night on the map. Uh, make sure to focus your eyes on the areas where you see more of the orange and red colors right in Howard County. Of course, Ellicott City, clearly the bullseye of this rainfall. Well, Denise, it is just rescue workers and first responders down here on Main Street tonight. The entire area cordoned off, being guarded 24-7 as county officials try and figure out a way to make it safe once again. New cell phone videos show the power of the water as it tore down Main Street in Ellicott City, tossing cars like toys down the road. We've seen a lot in town. This is stuff, this is a water direction, this is a water speed, a water height that we've never seen before. Today, large sinkholes litter Main Street as some buildings are barely standing, their foundations washed away. I'll tell you, when I came and I saw the damage, uh, it, it really... <laughs> I mean, it made me feel very emotional because I had not seen that kind of damage, nor did I expect to see it. 35-year-old Jessica Watsula and 38-year-old Joseph Anthony Blevins died in the floodwaters. Dozens of residents and business owners are evacuated as a 50-person incident management team responds. So we're doing the best we can to shore up the, the buildings and to, and to clean out the road so that hopefully we can get them to come down, even if it's for a short period, to come in to get belongings. FEMA is expected to assess the scene Thursday. More than 180 cars that were swept up in the floodwaters have now been towed to Centennial High School for owners to claim. Still from Sky Eye Chopper 13, you can see other vehicles remain in the river. A disaster assistance center will now open for two weeks to help those affected. We're going to recover. We're going to come out stronger. The county council is expected to extend a state of emergency as recovery efforts are just beginning. Complete coverage continues now with Abba Joy Burnett with more on the impact on businesses and homeowners. Abba Joy. Good evening, Vic. The cleanup here far from over. Take a look at this. A car stacked on top of another one that shows just how powerful the storm was. All of this damage, bad news for businesses. Daylight shows the power of what was a raging storm. Right now it looks like a war zone. Storefronts washed away all up and down Main Street in Ellicott City. My entire fall inventory is in my basement. Um, I was completely ready for fall. It's completely flooded. I have lost all of it. And we'll distribute the literature here. Business owners now have to start the painstaking process of dealing with insurance companies. The whole community is just shooken up at this point. You know, we, you know, overall, we're kind of lucky. You know, even though parts of our business got destroyed, but in comparison to, to what I saw walking down the street, we lucked out. One of the biggest obstacles for business owners is the condition of Main Street, and until it's cleared up and safe, only qualified personnel are allowed to go through. Right, those 911 calls came from people in buildings all down Ellicott City's main drag. Many people trying to find higher ground as they watch the buildings around them fill with water. And there are, oh my God, what's going on? Cars flying down the street because of the, oh my, the water, the floor is buckling. What's happening, ma'am? The water has 
broken through the floor on this floor. The calls are hard to hear. Terrified residents and visitors of Ellicott City calling for help in a desperate hour. The building is buckling. There's water in on the inside. We can feel the ceiling crumbling a little bit. As water gushed down Main Street, rising higher and higher into buildings, some desperately searched for a second or third floor. Okay, I need you guys to try to get to a higher level. I know it's a lot of water out there, but you guys need to get to higher ground. Sky Chopper 13 over the devastation in historic Ellicott City. The aftermath of the one in a thousand year flooding phenomenon that proved deadly for two people. Today, WJZ granted access for the first ground level view of Main Street. Once you get behind the scenes and get into a lot of these structures, there's Lots of water damage, lots of debris. A lot of it overwhelming for those directly impacted by it all. I've lived here a long time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's sad to see it all torn up. The furious flood waters damaged more than 130 buildings. Wednesday, a first time trip home for homeowners displaced by the deadly deluge was cut short after it was determined two buildings could collapse at any moment. Nobody wants you guys back in sooner than we do, but we have to make sure you're safe. We have to make sure the folks working down there are safe. And if all the damage wasn't bad enough from the deadly and historic flooding, it's also now presenting new problems. WJZ learning the flood has also caused a sewage leak in the area. Up to 5 million gallons a day leaking into the Patapsco River. But in all the tragedy, a moment of triumph as the iconic Main Street clock once washed away was returned home, set to 920. A reminder to many that time will eventually heal this city's wounds. Sky Chopper 13 is over Main Street right now to give you a, just a bird's eye view of what things look like right now. It's still a very fluid situation on Main Street as this recovery continues. One by one, crews took people to see their homes and businesses in Ellicott City ravaged in the flooding almost one week ago. Many did not have flood insurance. I filmed the water rushing into our basement and destroying our frame shop, and it went all the way up to the ceiling. It's a complete loss. I, I can't afford to replace our equipment. David Dempster owns an art gallery. He shot the viral video of the human chain rescuing a woman trapped in her car on Main Street. Thank God she came down when she did it. She had been down that street five minutes before. She, there's not a chance we could have saved her. Not a chance. The Howard County Council has extended the state of emergency past Labor Day. Several buildings remain in danger of collapse. This Kia was submerged in the floodwaters. You can see all the mud and gunk and roots that are still on it. It's one of several dozen cars that remain unclaimed. Can we get federal funding to help build some of these uh, storm water management facilities? Ron Peters owns several downtown buildings. The county executive appointed him to a special committee to prevent the flooding that's plagued Ellicott City for centuries. Is anybody going to want to rebuild downtown? Knowing that sooner or later it's going to happen again. If we don't do something to slow this extreme volume of water that comes up during flash flooding. While some cars just can't be saved after the disastrous flooding, some are doing everything they can to get theirs running. And with a little luck, they're succeeding. And since the flash flooding here in Ellicott City, a lot of fundraisers were held to buy supplies to help with cleanup, as you can see right here. Some people bringing their own supplies from home. Take a look at the video from the surveillance cameras mounted on the ceiling, capturing the moments the water bursts through the door, tossing eight foot long display cases like dollhouse furniture. All those showcases were custom made with LED lighting. Water filling to the ceiling, coins livelihood all but swept away. The damages in Ellicott City are so extensive. The estimates are $22 million, and that number could very well go up. Over the past three weeks, all we've seen on Main Street are trucks, dumpsters, and cleanup crews. And this is a part of Main Street, an area that really wasn't hit as hard as some others, but still, Businesses like Judge's Bench Pub, which are normally packed at this hour, remain empty inside, but come tomorrow, they'll finally reopen. Now, I've never seen so many people excited for traffic. When the traffic light came back open, cars started to go through Main Street, a portion that had been closed for two and a half months, and people were honking their horns, just really excited about what's happening here in historic Ellicott City. I want to show you what it looks like, though. There's still quite a bit of work to be done. Today marks 100 days since historic Ellicott City was all but swept away in unprecedented flooding that killed two people and destroyed Main Street. Devin Bartolotta reports on the challenge of picking up the pieces and where the city stands now. 
With more and more ribbon cuttings every day, Main Street is well on the road to recovery. On Ellicott City's Main Street, 100 days of painting and planning and progress. Well, there's been a lot of construction. It's basically been a construction zone. 100 days since July 30th. When a thousand year flash flood swallowed businesses, washed away dozens of cars, killed two people, and left dozens starting over. 100 days, what has the progress been like? Well, I think the progress has been amazing. County Executive Alan Kittleman tells WJZ Ellicott City is coming back. This is a long recovery, uh, but I think. Where we are right now is far beyond where most people would have expected us to be had you walked down the street on the night of July 30th. Now, the further down the hill you travel, the fewer stores there are open on Main Street, and the more work there is to be done. Out of the 90 businesses impacted, 41 are already back open, and another 28 plan to come back. A big help, the bulk of the infrastructure work is done. Visitors are optimistic. I'm really impressed that people are putting in the, you know, the work and really hard work, physically hard work and money, a lot of money to put this back together. I think it's incredible that how much has actually gotten done. 100 days down on the road to recovery, but plenty more up ahead. And nearly four months after a deadly flood devastated the historic Ellicott City, Main Street officially reopens today, just in time for Small Business Saturday. And local leaders and business owners led the ribbon cutting ceremony. Crowds of hundreds lined the sidewalks today and shopped at more than 40 local stores and restaurants now open for business. Throughout the whole process, I mean, we've had volunteers, and there were some days, though, when it was a struggle, and I didn't know if I could get up and go another day, but then people would stop by and they'd pick me up and they'd say, well, can we help you? Is there anything we can do? And that's what carried me through. Glad well, to see those businesses up and going. Now, Howard County Executive Alan Kettleman is encouraging everyone to come out and shop in Ellicott City to help the business owners get back on their feet.